For more, let's bring in Elizabeth Hunker in New York City. She describes herself as an early blockchain adopter, investor, and advisor. So, Elizabeth, if you can, uh, can you explain to our audience the 45-second to one-minute version? What exactly is blockchain, and how does it work? Sure. Um, so, blockchain is basically the first innovation in a ledger technology since basically the Phoenicians about 10,000 years ago or so. What that means is that um, basically without the need for a third party to overlook uh, any transaction or any interaction between two people to verify that that thing took place, the blockchain allows for that to take place through smart contracts uh, so that um, say you want to send money to someone or have something happen, the fact that uh, you send this information and a, a disinterested party basically can verify that that happened and then it goes on to uh, the recipient all in one single action um, that allows for completely uh, incorruptible transactions to take place without an entire, I don't know, $100 trillion industry that uh, maintains that through manual force. So it's supposed to be hacker proof and make life easier for everyone, uh, if I am understanding it correctly. But how long do you think it'll take before we see blockchain used by everyone around the world in every country, rich or poor? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it a uh, hacker proof. Uh, there are kind of uh, Byzantine faults and ways that, and 51% kind of attacks where you can convince or, or uh, trick systems into voting in this uh, seemingly perfectly decentralized way um, in, in, in not perfect ways. But uh, we are really, really far away, even almost a decade in, uh, to this technology from global adoption. Um, although we're seeing finally the major institutions that will kickstart that the furthest, being the financial institutions, start to take it very seriously and invest very heavily. So that will definitely accelerate things as we've been seeing for the last year or so. Right, we see all these conventions and forums like the one in Shanghai we just heard about. What about when it comes to blockchain and artificial intelligence, something that has also been, been getting a lot of attention? How would they intersect and work together? Can you give us any examples of, of what we would see there? That's actually uh, one of the most kind of exciting, tangible opportunities uh, in the space is where exactly those two things interact. So through artificial intelligence and machine learning technology, we can have you know, services performed for us without having to do menial tasks. We can have, uh, you know, discover things about ourselves that we don't know otherwise, like look at the data from 23andMe, for example, or genetic data, and find correlations that no kind of single human or single kind of even fund or, or, or research firm could discover in uh, you know, a tangible uh, time scale. Through uh, artificial intelligence, we can have that rapidly uh, uh, increased in speed and velocity. And the problem with that is that through previous technological systems of sharing that data, it's you have to kind of give up your privacy. You have to volunteer for the greater good that this information or, or advertiser firm's good, whoever, uh, that this is shared um, and pegged to you. Through distributed ledger technology, this can be both kind of distributed, so no two people can connect the dots between who this data is coming from, as well as encrypted data. So with this, we can kind of have our cake and eat it too, where these two uh, kind of major sectors, these cutting edge sectors interact, where we can have all of these new services coming through federated learning uh, kind of protocols, where this entire process is kind of distributed, incorruptible, close to unhackable, as well as benefit from, from all of these new services without having to give up that privacy. Some pretty exciting stuff. The future looks very bright. Elizabeth Hunker, thank you for joining us from New York.